Yeah. Oh. I'm Rowan Westlick, an RTF student here at ACC. This is our very first episode of CinemaWorks Late Night. Our guest today is a stunt double, actor, producer, and a guest speaker at UT. Please welcome Hector Gonzalez. Hector, it's an honor to have you with us, man. Thank you honor. so much for being here. My pleasure. My absolute pleasure. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited to talk to you since you know, you're a stunt double and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just came out. Yeah. Have you seen it? I have seen it, yeah. Awesome. It's pretty great, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so well, let's dive right into uh, how you became a stunt double. Like, what inspired you to even get into the film business? Um, well, technically speaking, I, I do stunt doubling and I'm a fight choreographer, which is kind of like a very big thing in the stunt industry it's because you can probably make a little bit of a living by saying I'm just going to do stunts, but you're always a lot more uh, profitable and uh, marketable if you can do a lot of things. So friends of mine that are in the industry right now, they're SAG, working in LA or Atlanta, New York, whatever, they are they usually have more than one talent. So uh, driving is a stunt, uh, riding, horseback riding, you know, underwater, rigging, a lot of these things are stunts and the more of them that you can do, the more profitable you are or the more specialized right. you are. So I'm kind of... Uh, I'm a martial artist. Um, I've been doing that for probably about 12 years now, and so my thing is like really complicated, complicated stunts. So uh, fight scenes, fight choreography—that's kind of what I get called for. And it kind of, it kind of just started because I was already in film as a student at UT, mm -hmm. and I was a big fan. And, and uh, I graduated, and then I just kind of took a martial arts class on a whim for fun. And I took to that really, really well. And years, a couple years down the line, friends at UT that taught or were students, because I was working at the time there, were kind of like, can, hey, can you come? I know you do martial arts. Can you come do this stunt? Or can you do this fight scene for me in a movie? And it kind of went from there to where I started doing a lot of fight scenes and choreography. And then I found a group of people around town kind of before they all left to, to LA and Atlanta that were also stunt performers. Right. And we all just kind of would hang out like every Sunday and just workshop and talk and have fun. And then we all started hiring each other for movies we got to do and, and things like that. And that's kind of how I got into that, this particular thing. But I was already always in film when I was a student. Um, and it just kind of was a really nice, happy accident of the two. So like when you were in college, that's when you knew you wanted to be a stunt double like well probably not I just knew that I wanted to be in film and I like kind of like anybody else like yourself or anybody I love uh, love film and that's what I went to school for and I had a really great kind of um, uh, just kind of like a really natural progression into stunts and fighting so gotcha. yeah. Yeah. so are there any like stunt doubles you look up to or that have mentored you uh, there's a couple like uh, you know first of all all of my friends that are in the industry right now um, a lot of really great people that are working on, like, you know, Captain Marvel, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, you name it right now. Like, wow. uh, you know, uh, what's the last thing? Stranger Things. Like, I've got friends working on that. And then I've got a couple of people that I both uh, I know personally and then I, I know only professionally. There's a guy named Scott Atkins who's a really great martial artist who is fantastic. Um, and he is an English dude, and he is, I've talked to him through email a couple of times, and uh, he was really nice in, in talking to me, so I look up to him. And then there's a stunt coordinator in L.A. called uh, named Ron Balicki, who is actually married to Bruce Lee's goddaughter, and he wow. is the... His instructor is one of Bruce Lee's best friends who's still alive and still teaching, mm -hmm. and he is actually my martial arts instructor's teacher. So I've gotten to train with him probably for like the last 10 years, every time he comes in town. We hang out, and he's given me a lot of professional advice and, and things like that. So I definitely look up to those people. And again, like all my friends that are still like really, really killing it, um, th those who, are, who I look up to and who I work with whenever I can. That's super awesome. So yeah. uh, you decided to go to UT, mm -hmm. and you said that there was like a lot of opportunities that came uh, from going to UT. Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing was networking. The, the absolute biggest thing was networking, because I was fortunate enough to get a job afterwards in the industry. Uh, working with equipment, and that's actually what my day job is. I, I'm an equipment manager for a lot of companies around town. And everywhere that I've gone, whether it was UT at first, and then another place, and where I currently work right now, it's a company called Rooster Teeth, um, I have been able to meet people that I worked with when I was a student, mm -hmm. and that I met when I was a student, or that I've worked with anywhere along there. And that job was given to me, or I was able to find it when I was a student at UT. So oh, wow. every door that I've had is kind of open from that. And, and every company that I go to, it's somebody saying, hey, you should really probably talk to this person if you want to do, 
if, if you're doing a fight or a stunt, Hector knows this, and, and if not, he knows who to talk to about it. So it's really, it was the biggest thing was like the networking that you, that you kind of come out of either whether it's ACC or UT, the, the, the friendships and, and the stuff that you make along the way. For sure. Yeah. Um, and so like when you were in college, you said you were, you had a job already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was working in the equipment room back in the day. It's how I met a lot of friends um, in particular. And uh, well, and the thing, the biggest thing that kind of like was a happy accident for me was being able to stay in the industry because I got to learn everything. So I know broadcast equipment, I know uh, film equipment, audio, lighting, everything, because I've had to take care of that no matter where I've, what job I've had through the industry. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that started with the, with being a student at UT and I worked during that time period um, to do that. Gotcha. So it wasn't really hard for you to find a job after college. You just it was a little, it was it. a little difficult because when, when we were students working in that job, it was just a part-time thing. Mm -hmm. It was just for students. And there was, it was my boss who ran the equipment room and nobody else, everybody else was students. Um, and so probably right after school, there was a little bit, I was a lifeguard during the summer. So I, I was a lifeguard for the city of Austin. Nice. I was a, what else did I do? I think I was a, a, a uh, substitute teacher for a little bit. Um, okay. So it was a little difficult and it was really when they turned that job into a full-time thing that I was able to kind of, um, you know, my boss reached out to me and she said, I really would like you to come interview for this full-time version. And that was it. But it was it was a little bit of a struggle afterwards. And I know everybody after after they graduate kind of like has this kind of like, you know, what to do. But I think it, it, it's a lot of being stubborn and, and keeping at it to right. be able to help you kind of find a job afterwards. For sure, so like yeah. you gotta be persistent and stuff. You have to be very persistent and you know, this, this industry is, is it's very uh, you know, difficult to stick with, but that's part of the, the, the journey. I think it's important to kind of do that because if you can keep going when, well, you know, when it's hard to find a job and if you can find a job and if you can, you can work hard, then you've already beaten like half of, half of the, the things that are set against you is just your persistence. Right. So. And uh, what was like one of your first gigs again as like a stunt double or? Um, the, the, it kind of happened. So I, after I graduated, uh, I worked at UT, I started doing martial arts. And a couple of years later, it all kind of came together for me, probably around 2011, 2012, um, where I had professors saying, hey, would you mind stopping in and teaching this to some of my students? And I had students that worked for me at the time that were like, uh, do you know you know, kind of this thing, can you do it in, uh, for, in a movie for me? As, and as well as like the grad students who were, you know, the grad productions at UT are a lot more kind of um, uh, allowed to be a little more ambitious mm -hmm. with a little more funding and a little more resources. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and it, it like literally hit, like I probably had, I went from never having been on a set as a martial artist or a, a stunt person to probably in a semester's time doing seven movies. Um, wow. And the very first one I did was kind of a, a really fun thing um, it was a movie by a guy who would go on to make the first 3D uh, student film in the country, like produced as a, 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 through a college. Uh, and it was his previous film, and uh, it was shot in the desert, and there was a lot of visual effects that he added in later because he he's a really fantastic visual effects. As a matter of fact, he's teaching visual effects right now at, the, at, the, at UT. But it was in the desert, and that was probably my very first thing. And it was a lot of running in the sand and getting thrown, and it was like explosions. It was a very like sci-fi kind of a thing. So that was probably my first stunt gig. That's yeah. an awesome first stunt. It was gig. a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> shaking my hair at the end of the day was full of like all of, everything was full of sand. But you yeah, know, so awesome. So. Uh, what was uh, what was like one of the craziest stunts you've ever done? I, you know, I was I was thinking about that not too long ago. Um, I don't know off the top of my head because right when you do some of these things, you're like, that's just another one in the books, uh, or it's another thing that I was like, that's a lot of fun. So I mean, I've been on top of trains before, and more for safety than anything. I've I've um, you know I've um, probably the one of the last things I did in May was like dri uh, driving. Um, a couple of different Jeeps, like precision, precision driving in the desert, um, like off-roading, off trying to hit marks and all that kind of stuff, and climbing tops of mountains and things like that just for a shot is, is always a lot of fun. Anything that's unique that I would never have found myself doing is probably one where I'm like, that's, I would never get the chance to do this otherwise, so I always enjoy that. Gotcha. Yeah. And obviously safety is like a huge it's deal. It's the number one thing. Um, how did you stay safe throughout your career, I guess? It's, it's a matter of, of you know, you probably want to think about what goes into a stunt first. And the biggest lesson that I had to learn when I was younger, when I was just starting out, was speaking up for myself. Because you're in an ideal world, your, your coordinator, 
Um, your stunt coordinator will speak up for you or mm -hmm. will talk to you about these things. But when I was the younger and I was um, involved in some things, it was, it was um, you know, I got injured because I didn't speak up. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a minor injury, but it still kind of nags me sometimes today. It's a pinched nerve in my back which comes and goes, so I'm pretty fine. But it's it's one of those things where that was a very big learning uh, lesson for me at the time, which is like always, you know, walk through the stunt beforehand, walk through with everybody, make sure everybody knows what's going on. And then again, if I don't feel right, like you have to speak up for yourself because, you know, you always hope that somebody else will, but at the end of the day, right before you're supposed to do it, if you don't feel comfortable and if you don't feel safe, you need to kind of like say, hey, let's like, I'm not gonna do this. And right. don't be afraid to. For sure. Yeah. Um, so what would you say you enjoy most about stunt doubling? Um, I, I love, when it comes to coordinating or doubling, I love being creative because again, doing fight choreography and coming up with that, it's almost as creative as any other department because usually I'll get the script really early on from a director who's a, fr a friend or somebody that I work with or somebody who's got my name from somebody else. And my process is kind of similar to everything else is lining the script for like stunt beats or, or fight beats and then figuring out, okay, well, what's the safest way to do this? And a lot of times the most fun thing for me, when I, especially when I'm doing a fight, is it'll just say in the script, they fight. And so it's kind of up to me and I'll just go and talk to the director and be like, what are you, what are you like looking for? What are, you, what are the main things, if you could see one thing in this scene, what would you like to see? And then reading the rest of the script, figuring out kind of what is um, the story, like what's the storytelling, and then figuring out how to make story beats happen with action beats. Right. And that's a huge part of it, and then going from there is, is kind of like what I do. And that's that's literally my favorite part is, you know, I look at a blank screen that says they fight, and then I watch it at the end of it. Whether No matter how it came out, if I thought it should have been shot a different way, just all the work that went into making this scene and people who may or may not have the background in it and, and being successful on screen doing it, is my favorite part. Yeah, so you get to like direct it yourself, in a, in a sense. In a yeah, in a sense, because again, I'll I'll never sign off. Or like nothing will get signed off without the director's approval. But it's always something where I get to come up with all of these ideas and say, which do you like? How do we make this better? What is working for you in a story uh, sense, and what's not working for you in a story sense? And then we'll kind of workshop it from there. And when it's all done, then that's when I'm proud of it. So, right. Yeah. And you said you've like guest speaked at like uh, UT or in yeah, some colleges? I, yeah, I, I, well a lot, of, a lot of places actually. That kind of all started again in like around 2012 when I, because I was fortunate enough to know people and now some of, again, going back to networking, some of those people have gone on to teach all over um, Austin and you know the country and, and, and uh, high schools, middle schools, um, colleges, universities. And so probably for the last maybe uh, since about 2013 or so, I've been teaching um, as a guest lecturer for at UT um, every semester and so it's like a little bit of a lab like one day I'll go and just show clips and talk about uh, you know cinematography and, and lighting and, and casting and, and pre-production and all these things and why they're so important if you're gonna do action or even if it's like dancing or choreography anything that, that is physical and you put those all together and then um, the next day we'll actually do it in class, in, in a lab. So I'll have everybody get up who wants to participate and we'll just go through it and we'll create a fight scene from scratch. And then they'll be able to, like it'll take probably like three hours and we don't even film it. They just, they'll get a feeling of it and they'll run through it. And I've always been told uh, by my friends that ask me to come and teach that it's usually the student's favorite part of the semester. Yeah. Because it's something different. I mean, I don't know if you can, through your classes, but getting to get up and actually get physical right. is something that's not really you know the norm. And mm -hmm. so it's a lot of fun to do it. And so I've been fortunate enough to do that on multiple levels and, and give speeches at conferences and stuff like that, academic conferences, since 2013 or so. So I really, really enjoy I really, really enjoy teaching. It's a lot of fun for me to just kind of like, you know, go out and talk to, to people and kind of see those interests be piqued because it interests me. And now it's a it's kind of a weird thing. I, one of my first days at Rooster Teeth, somebody who is doing really, really well up up over there um, oh, yeah. on 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 their talent side was like, you taught me you were in you taught me, and it would end up being she was in the very first class that I taught in 2012 and so I'm starting to run into people around town who remember me specifically because I taught a class when they were in school so that's, that's cool it's cool but I'm also like oh I'm getting older here so right yeah <laughs> so you uh, visit UT kind of a lot and I did yeah I, I got a master's in 2017 also from there, awesome. in, the, in the film department also congrats so. yeah thanks but yeah so I've, I've been I probably 
since 2002, there ha probably hasn't been a year that I didn't have some business on campus for right. a while. Yeah. So since you've been there a lot, have you gotten to meet Matthew McConaughey? Or? So, funny story, no, I have not, but I have like a couple of weird six degrees of separation with him. Oh, nice. So, um, he, the, the person who's teaching that class over there with him, because mm -hmm. he, he teaches it with a, a, a longstanding uh, UT alum, uh, or UT professor, I should say. Uh, he taught me a couple of classes when I was there. Oh wow! And then also, even in a weirder, in a weirder sense, um, my dad went to high school with his brother, and I've met his brother a couple of times. And they graduated in, in 1972, because uh, Matthew was born in a small town called uh, Uvalde, and that's mm -hmm. where my parents are from. Um, and my dad, whenever we're there, he's like, "Oh yeah, that's where Matt used to, where they grew up," because he was friends with his brother, wow. and they played on little league together, and you know, with his brother, and his, and he was like, Matt was always running around. You know, he was the, the little brother that was kind of dunked on by his older brother. Uh -oh. but, so I've met his brother uh, a couple of times, and I've, you know, my dad always like, oh, yeah, that's, that's where, you know, because apparently his dad, Matthew McConaughey's dad was the little league coach for my dad and his brother. So he's like, that's where we used to play. Wow. And behind, the, behind his hometown or his, you know, his home is the, the field where they would practice little league. Okay. And so, yeah, I've never quite met him yet, but I have this weird kind of like. Connection. Yeah. To yeah. Him, so. That's awesome. So uh, what would be your favorite film? This is a little bit random, but what, sure. what would you uh, well, say? Well, if we're talking uh, just in general or uh, like fight, or like stunt fighting or what? What Like if it was an action movie, what would be your favorite? Well, in the last couple of years, the, you know, Mission Impossible last year really blew me away because that was fantastic. Mad Max, Fury Road was really great. Um, this year has been some really fantastic movies. Just, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I got into film mm -hmm. as a film student versus like a stunt person. So I love all kinds of films. So I'm, gotcha. I'm really into to just anything great. And then of course, I have a, a special appreciation for watching movies that uh, you know do martial arts and fighting and stunts and do it all really well. And and uh, you know, just kind of, I wrote it, my thesis was actually on the differences between stunt co like industries in the U.S. versus like. Um, you know, Indonesia, Thailand, where they, you know, they hit each other and stuff like that. So it's, I always have an appreciation for seeing like physical, like people doing things very, very real. Mm -hmm. Because m the friends that I work with and myself, we're always feel a little bit hampered by working in the U.S. because there are a lot of safety things involved and a right. lot of things that hold you back a little. Um, and so it's always cool to just see things that where they're not holding back, even though that raises a whole mixed bag of issues with safety. It's always fun to watch those things. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, would you say that uh, you would look up to like Tom Cruise's like I acting think, style? I think he's, he's uh, does you know, it all, right? I think he is, you know, let's keep it like, he, as a performer, he impresses me every single time he's in, on screen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's fantastic, yeah. Awesome. So are there any celebrities you've worked with? In uh, yeah, I mean like, you know, working in, being at UT for a while and working, I have gotten to meet or see or have in the in especially now, uh, Rooster Teeth is now owned by Warner Brothers, so we're, there's a lot of weird synergy going on. So I mean, through my years of being in Austin, working in film, I mean, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, um, you know, Kamal Nanjiani not too long ago, uh, Dave Bautista, um, Dennis Quaid. You know, like there's there's a lot of people that I've gotten to meet or talk to or at least just kind of like be in the room while they were doing their thing oh, cool. and vice versa through UT and then the other places that I've worked at since then. Did so. you see David Batista's new movie? So uh, we actually, uh, like I said, some weird synergy thing. We, were, we had a, held a screening of it at the annual Rooster Teeth RTX conference this year. Okay. So he was not, he wasn't there, come on on Gianni. I haven't seen it yet because I was supposed to go and I wasn't able to make it because it was a big weekend at right. the conference. But they, we had a screening of it and he was at our studio with Kamal Nanjiani talking about it for a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. So what, what kind of like, to kind of finish it off, what kind of sure. advice would you uh, offer to aspiring stunt, stunt doubles or, you know, aspiring filmmakers of any yeah. sort? Yeah, no, I, I would say that, listen, you know, when you're, when you're getting ready to do some of this stuff, Choreography and stunts and all that kind of stuff, it's all under the umbrella of filmmaking and you know you want to take as many lessons as you can in any place that you can. And I remember a long time ago somebody said to me, who was a professor, uh, said, you know, just make whatever you're doing, make it, make it funny because people are probably going to laugh at it anyway. Right. And that's stuck with me for a really long time as kind of the wrong way to, to approach these things because, you know, as students, you're just trying to, to learn and, and to grow and there's no reason you can't try anything a little more ambitious. You just got to be safe with it. So right. take take all the lessons you can and be safe 
and kind of like just kind of you know try everything that you want to try just figure out how to do it the right way and the safe way and again always just speak up for yourself if you don't feel that something's safe or done the right way gotcha yeah well thank you so yeah, much for coming man it's, yeah, it's been pleasure. awesome and uh it was a pleasure to have you could we uh could we do one more stunt before sure. we uh yeah finish off we'll move the chairs over thank you so much all right so what do you have like a hand kind of fighting style sure on? yeah um okay well, let, well, me, let me get serious yeah, sure. real quick here do you want do you want to do something or you want me to do something to show what do you what would you prefer you could uh you you find me i'll take it i'll take a punch or okay something. so i'm not gonna quite punch but i'll uh all right we'll go through a little something so i want you to um like say you're gonna throw a uh, jab in my face there. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go here. Let's like make it a little more right there. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna go there. Okay. And I'm gonna right. hit your arm down, and I would love for you to, as I'm gonna punch you, block my hand there. Okay. So like kind of like that. Okay. All right. So we'll do it one more time. All right. So Close we'll go. Well, oh, wait for me. Wait for okay, me to go. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome, man. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about uh, Hector Gonzalez, you can follow him on his Instagram. Uh, Y'all have a good night. Stay tuned for next uh, week's episode on Cineworks Late Night. <laughs>